Today is May 9th. On the 9th of May 1945, the 15 republics of the Soviet Union first inaugurated what is now known as the Victory Day, a festivity following Liberation Day, celebrated just the day before. This day celebrates the victory against Nazi Germany in 1945, which was finalized through the signing, on behalf of the Germans, of a legal document known as the German Instrument of Surrender. This holiday is currently a labor-free day, but this has not always been the case. In what year did Victory Day become a labor-free day? Follow the link in the description of this video to submit your answers and win an amazing prize. Welcome back to Smarter by the Second, now here with the second season. I am Dan Veldhuis and joined uh, as Marnix. Welcome Marnix, how are you? Yeah, pretty good. I'm looking forward to uh, what will happen here at the quiz. Yeah, could you uh, introduce yourself to the viewers? Of course. So, I'm Marnix Vos. I am a uh, currently fifth year student for uh, mathematics. Currently doing my uh, the final few master subjects. Uh, and I will be doing a geography thing here. I know something about that, probably. We'll see. Um, yeah, looking forward to what uh, what this quiz will bring. Uh, good to hear. And you've also done a, a board year, I heard. Yes, but not at Abacus, at Navigators, a uh, Christian student association where I was chairman last year. It was pretty fun, uh, although it was during Corona, so that was sad. But yes. Yeah. Still very uh, learnful. Exactly, learnful. <laughs> exact word I would use. Yeah, apparently the board here at Abacus uh, hasn't learned me anything. Uh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's you, today you're playing for Geography, the category. Mm -hmm. So, why Geography? Um, well, I think it's interesting. Also, I just know a lot of the facts I, I have. From when I was young, I, I liked maps and I have this huge map in my room where with my parents. So, I know a bit about that. And I, I played quite some GeoGuessr, so I also know the GeoGuessr countries I know a lot more about, <laughs> but not I don't know that much about everything. But we'll, we'll see how, how well it holds up and which we'll see, we'll which see. things might trip me up. Okay, because this is the first episode of the new season, I will go over the rules once more. We will play four rounds, increasing in difficulty. In the first round we need five correct answers, second six, in the third seven, and in the last round nine answers. You also start with three lifelines at the start, and you can use these lifelines and you will get one uh, incorrect answer will be counted as a correct one. But each lifeline does not uh, only decrease your lifetime uh, lifelines, but also cost 16 seconds. Um, after three rounds, you have the option to play the fourth round. It's uh, all in. And if you get it, you get the bigger prize. But if you lose, then you lose everything. And in this last round, as I said earlier, all nine of them need to be correct. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the first round. It has only been a few days since Liberation Day in the Netherlands, and what is a better way to show your pride of the Netherlands than raising the Dutch flag? In this round we will be a little further from home, however. Nine African flags. So, if you have your maps, does it, did it also include flags? Or yeah, no? yeah, that's flags below it. I, I, don't, I don't know, we'll see. If it's the GeoGuessr countries, then I know the flags, but... All right, so you will see the flag on the screen. I will not say anything uh, about it. Just yell the answer. So the nine countries you can choose from are Angola, Gabon, Kenya, Tunisia, Ivory Coast, Morocco, Mali, Algeria, and Egypt. Good luck. Yeah. Kenya. Uh, <laughs> I think that's Mali. That's Algeria, Ivory Coast, Tunisia, that's Morocco, uh, Gabon, uh, that's Angola, I think. Okay, that's not correct. Then uh, this one is this one is then 
Mali, and then the one from Mali. Can I? I can't see that again, right? No. Nope. Then that one has to go to Egypt. Stop the time. Oh no, no, wait. Uh, the one from. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Stop the time. <laughs> All right. So, are you confident there are five correct answers? Let's see. Can I can I look at the answers now? Uh, no, oh, but flag. I mean, like the the. Yeah, you can now. Uh, their time is not Take your running. time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Kenya is correct. I think Ivory Coast is correct. Algeria is correct. Morocco is correct. Uh, mm. <laughs> Let's use one of them. <laughs> one lifeline. One lifeline will be sure. used. Yeah. And 16 seconds will be subtracted. Yeah. Then we'll go check the answers. So okay. the first flag was indeed Kenya. Second one was Mali. So I think you said that at first, but no. you uh, corrected yourself incorrectly. Oh, yeah. Then next up is Algeria. Then Ivory Coast. Tunisia. That's already five correct. Congratulations. This is Morocco. Then this is Egypt. Angola. And lastly, Gabon. Okay. So no lifeline was needed. Uh, yeah. All right, then we can continue to the next round. In 1615, Willem Neerveld brewed for the first time in Groenlo, what would become the well-known brand of beer Grols. It was though only on May 3rd, 1922, that brewery The Clock from Groenlo would fuse with the Enschedeese Stoombierbrouwerij from Enschede. This union would later be the reason for the name change that would grant Grols its naming. Enschede is though a thought not the only city with a brewery in Europe, so here are nine European beers and their lands of origin. Okay. <laughs> you will see the beer on the screen and I will say the name of the beer and you have to tell the uh, land of origin. Do you uh, know a lot of these uh, no, beers? this will go horribly. Right, so but let's see. The uh, lands that you can choose from are the Czech Republic, Poland, Germany, Denmark, Italy, France, Greece, Belgium, and Ireland. All right, so we are looking for six correct answers this round. Mm -hmm. All right, good luck. Carlsberg. Denmark. Kronenburg. Uh, I guess Germany then. Pilsner Urquell. Uh, Poland. Guinness. Ireland. Zivic. Oh. That is Poland, and then Poland goes to Czechia. Peroni. Uh, Italy. Mitos. Greece. Erdinger. Oh, another German uh, thing. Uh, well, then that one goes to Germany, and the one from Germany, I don't know, goes to... Goes to... I don't know. Uh, it goes to France. Sure, let's do that. And Stella Artois. I think. Oh. Uh, then that one goes to Belgium. Sure. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Okay, I, I don't know. The time, what, yeah, stop the time. I don't know about this wire anymore. <laughs> this is impossible. All right. So are you? Uh, yeah. Do all of them. It's horrible. All of them. Okay. Yeah. So all two lifelines will be used. Yeah. And we go on to checking. <laughs> the first one was Carlsberg, and here we said Denmark, and that is correct. Next one was a bit misleading. It sounded German, but it is indeed France, mm. so uh, also correct. <laughs> Next up is from Czech Republic. And then an easy one, Guinness, is of course from Ireland. Mm -hmm. And Zivic is the beer from Poland. Peroni is from Italy. There's already six correct. Okay. Yeah. So uh, no lifelines needed. Then Mitos is from Greece. Erdinger is indeed from Germany. Oh. And the last one was Belgian beer. Okay. So uh, you had a perfect round, which will grant you one lifeline back. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good. So uh, you go with one lifeline into the third round. 
And some buildings have taken centuries to build, especially since at the time of construction for some buildings, cranes were not available yet. For the upcoming buildings, cranes haven't been used either, but we hope they didn't take as long to build as the original counterparts. Here are nine buildings made with Lego. So the nine buildings are the Belen Tower, the St. Pistols Cathedral, the Tower of London, the Chichen Itza, the Flatteron Building, the Dresden Vauerkirche, the St. Peter's Basilica, Westminster Abbey and the Cologne Cathedral. Have you ever been to one of these buildings? Yes, I've been to the Cologne Cathedral and I think that's it. So uh, yeah. hopefully you recognize that one. Yeah, maybe. All right, you will see a picture of them in the Lego version. And uh, good luck. Mm -hmm. That's the Chichen Itza. Uh, that is the flat iron building. Uh, that's Min Westminster Abbey. Uh, that is the one in I think that's St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, Balem Tower. St. Basil's Cathedral. That's the Cologne Cathedral. Uh, is that the Tower of London? It's not really a tower, but sure. Oh, no, that's the Cologne Cathedral. Then the other one is the St. Basil's Cathedral. And then there is one answer left. Yes, but I don't see it yet. Yeah, because okay. it's already... Uh, oh, but yeah, then that one goes to the Dresden Frauenkirche. I don't understand where that is going. Bent, stop. What? I don't get what happened. Yeah, you stopped. I think uh, you stopped just in time to yeah. use your last lifeline. But there was one building missing. Uh, I don't think so. You named one uh, building twice. Oh, Which is I? why, okay. uh, uh, whatever. Put the final lifeline. <laughs> I I still had I think 17 seconds left when I stopped yeah, the time. So I think so as well. So do you think uh, no, you made it? No, I don't, I don't recognize uh, any of those buildings. But all right, then we'll, we'll see. Uh, Maybe the beer was also <laughs> suddenly fine. All right, then we can go to checking them. First up was the Chichen Itza. So that's correct. Good start. And uh, the shape uh, is uh, really fitting for this building, for the name. It's the Flat Iron Building. And this is the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. So there's your first incorrect answer, which will be counted correct using your lifeline. Then we have the St. Basil's Cathedral in Russia. Then the Belen Tower. Then we have the Dresden Frauenkirche. And then we have the Cologne Cathedral. The Tower of London. And lastly, Westminster Abbey. Yeah. I'm sorry, Marnix. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have not uh, made it to the foreground. It is what it is. But either way, we have the participation award. Yay, a Dutch beer. <laughs> And clock you. So thank you very much for participating. Yeah, thanks for having you here. It. And uh, yeah, thanks to you and thanks to the production team, of course. And then uh, I will uh, enjoy my the clock uh, <laughs> Dutch beer. Although apparently I'm also quite proficient with uh, European beers. Uh, <laughs> sometime soon. Yeah. And to the viewers at home, the answer to the viewers' question was 1965. Congratulations to the winner. A prize will be on your way to you. So this was smarter by the second. Thanks again, Marnix, for being here, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>